Hey guys, I'm Sarah. This is Kim and Dan. We are here in the shop at Drifter Vans and today we're gonna to be installing my EcoFlow power kit. Stay tuned to see how we install it and why this is the power system that you should choose. Here at Drifter Vans, we are official reseller and installer for EcoFlow, so you can purchase any equipment or power kits directly through us. We give free consultation and can help you out through the entire process of the install and the troubleshooting. So you guys just started using the EcoFlow power kits in all of your builds, yes. right? So when it comes to electrical system in your van, you do have a lot of options and all of them are good. We're very excited about this new EcoFlow power kit that literally just came out for a lot of reasons. First of all, the install is way cleaner and way easier than most of the systems. It saves a lot of time as well. The system itself is way more user friendly, which is absolutely great when we train the customers on how to use the electrical system because it, it's a lot to learn at once when you move into vine life to learn how to use your plumbing and electrical system. So EcoFlow really helps with this. The customer service is awesome as well. They can check your system remotely in case of a problem to tell you what's wrong. It's also great with the features. You do have a lot of features with the EcoFlow system that you do not have with the other systems. We will talk about some of these features during the install. It's overall an amazing system. We are very happy with it. We just unboxed the entire EcoFlow power kit. So here you have your all-in-one power hub. Here you have your distribution panel with all the breakers. Here you have your touchscreen monitor and all of the harnesses are right there. So I have a Ford Transit van. How are we gonna install this power kit? So the very first step is to take the alternator charger wire and connect it from the front batteries to the power hub. All right, so first step of roughing the wire harnesses out is going to be grabbing the alternator charge harness and we're gonna run that through the floor. Send it through. So now here we are up front with the alternator charge harness in our Ford Transit. I need to punch a hole in here for the ground wire. I'm going to connect the positive wire to the CCP2, which is the top of the two terminal posts. I will tighten that down with a socket here in a second. And the negative wire, is going to be stretched over and secured here after I rough the paint up because you want to have bare metal contact. Now remember that this is a Ford Transit. On the Fords they give you two extra ports, CCP1 and CCP2 on the side of the driver's seat to connect the alternator charger. This is not the case on the Sprinter or on the Promaster. In that case, you need to connect it directly to the battery. We're going to show you how. So this is the alternator charger harness that you see me install in Sarah's Transit. In the ProMaster and in the Mercedes, they're both going to be connected directly to the battery. So here in the ProMaster, you'll have to modify the harness by cutting it a little bit. You can hook the negative onto one of the available posts here. And in the Dodge on the positive side, you can hook up to a couple different positions where I like to go is here uh, and put it on a fuse. In some instances, this uh, EcoFlow provided alternator charge harness will not reach the starter battery. In that case, you're going to have to attach the power to a fuse block and run a four gauge wire out from the opposite side and connect to the battery where I had previously showed. All right, so now we're back at the Mercedes Sprinter van, and I'm just gonna show you the battery compartment, which is located underneath the driver's side floor. You will just first have to lift the floor mat out. There will be a little container that protects the battery bank. Pop that off. And lastly, you will have to remove the positive side guard. At that point, you can connect the EcoFlow power harness to an available battery terminal on the positive side. 
and the negative will connect to a chassis ground that I like to put underneath the driver's seat. So now that we've wired the alternator harness, what's next? We need to run the shore power harness to the power hub. Now we're hooking up the shore power charging harness uh, through the floor to the shore power outlet. So now that we have the shore power wire harness run through to the other side, we're going to take our Furion 30 amp shore power outlet and I'll just take the back of this off so you can see there's a gland inside of there that holds the wires. I usually just stick my finger through to hold onto it and then we will be taking the shore power harness and running all the wires through like so. Next you will send them through this piece and we can loosely tighten that now because we'll, we still will need some play in the wire before we finish terminating. Uh, next we'll send the wires through the hole that we pre-drilled for the shore power charge and if you follow me outside I'll show you how we terminate it into the shore power outlet. Here you have your line or your hot wire, your neutral, and your ground. And as you can see on the back side of the the shore power outlet, you got your ground, your neutral, and your black as indicated by green, white, and black. So if you want to, you can peel these uh, casings off and then you'll just set the whichever safe, color. Right? Yeah, it's completely on. safe. Yep. Okay. Got it. Go. I'm an electrician now. Not a very good one. All right, Dan, do that one. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Every time I use this outlet, I'm gonna be like, I installed this. <laughs> you can Good. go recheck my I'll work. I'll give you a little check right now. A little tug test, solid. Cool. Now that we have the wires connected to the outlet itself, we can slide this all the way up. And as you see on the back side here, it's got a locking mechanism that you twist clockwise for it to lock into place. And now that we know the length we got on our wire, we can tighten this end up and it will choke the plastic clamp down on the wire so that it's not loose and flopping around in the back side of the van there. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, now that my shore power is connected, what's next? Next, we'll step inside your van and install the EcoFlow power hub and the battery bank. Awesome, let's do right, it. Let's go. Now that we're back inside your van, the next step is going to be to install your EcoFlow Power Hub. And what exactly is the Power Hub? That's a good question. So the Power Hub is actually your inverter, it's your alternator charge controller, your solar charge controller, and you also have shore power charging all in one kit. The nice part about this as well is that they offer additional ports so that you could hook up a generator. Nice. That's amazing. All three of the ports that I removed the dust covers on are for either alternator or solar. So it is possible for you to install a second alternator in your van and run that harness back to the power hub, or you can uh, install a second set of solar panels and have the option to run it right back to your inverter. So how's the install? Is it difficult? Uh, no, not at all. Actually, they provide you with a nice mounting bracket, which I've already previously installed on the wall here. There's two clips that'll slide directly onto the bracket. Oh, wow. And that's it. So now that we have the EcoFlow Power Hub mounted onto the bracket, uh, we will put the top and mounting brackets on. There's three holes here. You will set the bracket up and thread in these nice screws that EcoFlow provides. And now that the top bracket is secured firmly to the Power Hub itself, we will then take the mounting hardware that EcoFlow provided us and we will sync that to our shelf. And now with the bracket secured firmly to the power hub and the wall, the power hub cannot be removed unless you remove all of those screws. So you said that the power hub can be charged with solar and I have 350 watts of solar panels on my roof. Have you guys already connected them? Uh, we have not connected them yet. They are installed on the roof, but that's what this nice power harness that EcoFlow provides is for. Uh, it plugs directly into the base of the power hub, and the wire harness itself gets run through a channel up the walls. We punch a hole through the roof and connect a solar gland so that it's weatherproof and you don't have to worry about rain or snow coming inside your van. 
and then these two ends right here plug directly into your solar panels. Oh yeah, I've dealt with these before in the Airstream. Yeah, MC4s, nice. yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so now that we've installed the power hub, what's next? We can go ahead and unpackage the batteries and start mounting those. Due to the size of the batteries and the location of the wheel well, we actually decided to move the power hub further up in the van and we're gonna put the batteries towards the back. So now we're in the back of the van or the new location of the batteries. Uh, and as you'll see here, EcoFlow has really thought of everything. They even provided us with a template for the batteries. These brackets here are to contain the battery as well as secure it to the floor so that it can't move while you're traveling down the road. Prior to screwing those brackets down, they gave us holes in the template for the screws to go. So I'm gonna mark those with a Sharpie before we move any further. And we can remove the template, line up our brackets, and start securing them to the floor. It was very easy. It was very light. So when you go to set the battery in there, you're just gonna wanna make sure that this little button right here is facing out towards the center of the van because this button can be pressed to power the battery on or off, as well as this little screen right here is a display screen that'll show you the uh, state of charge of the battery. Okay, awesome. All right. All right, I'm gonna give it a go. Oh yeah, that's hefty. Let's see. Do a little squat here. like a perfect fit. Beautiful. So now that you've placed the battery in, in between the brackets, we can take the mounting strap. You'll just take the, the little J hook and come in from the top. Okay. Yep. And then you can take the other piece and just basically you're gonna go around the other side and do exactly what you just did there. And then we'll uh, cinch it down after. All right, cool. Wow, that is like super secure. Yep, it's not going anywhere. Nice. Wow, that was super easy. Yeah. And then when you connect the two, you just plug them into each other, or how does that work? So this cap right here is gonna, it's just a dust cover. So the harness for the battery will plug in and go to the power hub. Thank you. So here's your battery harness. It's just going to plug directly into the top of the battery there. And then the other end we will deliberately feed through the bottom here and into the face of the power hub. How is that compared to the previous systems that you used? Oh gosh, so prior to EcoFlow coming up with these wire harnesses, uh, I would have to take a hammer and essentially a little anvil terminal crimp style and beat it terminal head onto each wire and then secure them from the battery to a distribution bar. So they took all of that work out for me by providing us with these nice harnesses that just plug in to both the power hub and the battery. Wow. So it cuts hours out of my workload. Wow, you must love that. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Just plug it right into the face of the battery. Make sure you hear it click. I'm going to run this harness out now and bring it to my power hub, but I'm not going to actually secure it to the power hub until I'm ready to turn the entire system on. And I do that strictly uh, as a safety protocol so that as long as the battery is not plugged into the power hub, there's no chance of any of the circuits being powered. So I'm just adjusting these straps right now because we actually installed it as if this van had only one battery in it, which is okay to leave the clips on the top. But when you're adding a second battery on top, you're going to want to make sure the clips on them are actually either on the face or the back. Once it's fully cinched down, you can actually stack the other battery on top. All right, you have to lift this one a little bit higher, so I'm gonna make Kim do this one. Oh, you made that look easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice these two screws right here on both batteries, the L bracket goes out to the wall. Oh, nice. Super and secure. there's another one for the bottom as well. To finish off the battery install, we'll remove that last dust cover there. Install the second battery harness until you hear the click. And then I'm gonna run this out as I did with the first one. 
I won't be securing it to the power hub right now so that we don't energize the system. You'll notice that the front of the power hub has writing on it for battery one, battery two, and if you are doing a lot of backcountry camping, there is a spot for battery three or the smart generator. Now that the batteries have been installed, the next step is to install the distribution panel, right? Right, yep, and at this stage of your install, because we still have a little bit more work to do in the rear end, I'm just gonna show you the mocked up end wall that we have uh, the distribution panel cut into. Okay. So basically, after the rest of our work is done, this will be installed in the end wall. This is your EcoFlow power distribution panel. Uh, the left hemisphere of the panel will be set up for 120 volt appliances. They have breakers uh, that are 20 amps. That'll be for the outlets and your air conditioning unit, refrigerator. And the right hemisphere of the power distribution center will be for 12 volt appliances, mainly your water pump and overhead lights, things of that nature. They will also be fuses instead of breakers and you can remove the 20 amps that come with it. Most of the appliances that you'll be using will not be uh, 20 amps. So we're gonna end up pulling those out and adding five amp fuses, which EcoFlow generously provided us in your packet. Do you have a band that's complete that you can show me how this works? Yeah, I do. Uh, right. If we, you want, we can look at it right now. Cool, yeah, let's do it. Sounds good. All right, so inside the power distribution panel, as I was mentioning, you'll have all of the wiring for your 120 volt on the left side, and they're all on breakers. And on the right side, you'll have your 12 volt, which is for things like your water pump and that. So to wire this, I left one undone to show an example. You need wire ferrules, which just slide on the end of the wire like so. You got a special ferrule crimper. Slide it to the end. Crimp. The crimp leaves behind a special mark on there so you can see that it actually crimped. The negatives will get dropped onto this bar here. And once you have the ferrule seated, you just close the lever and that wire's terminated. On the positive side, I already have it landed inside the panel. What did you just connect with the ferrule? Oh, uh, the, the circuit that I just landed is for the reading light here. Oh. And uh, I'm gonna put a five amp fuse on that. So if you wanna test it, uh, you can yeah. just press that little button right there. Sweet. Boom. It works. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, our electrician, showed you how to install everything. At the very end of the build, when you're ready to turn on and to power your EcoFlow power kit, you just have to connect battery one, battery two if you have a second one, or battery three if you have a third one, the alternator harness and the solar harness. You plug it into place and you press the magic button to power on everything. Okay, so that is pretty much it. How is that compared to the other systems that you've installed? Oh, the EcoFlow is great. It saves me uh, roughly two and a half, three hours on every install because I no longer need to make wire terminals. All the harnesses are pre-made for me. It's plug and play. Uh, the other part that's nice is it's user friendly with the app being able to Bluetooth everything too. The, the first six fuses actually are Bluetooth or you can go right to your, your display screen and you can shut them all off via the display screen or your app. So in what situation would I need to turn the circuit on and off with my phone? Uh, it would make sense to have that because the outlet that controls your water heater, as it currently sits with the old system, you would have to physically turn the water heater on every single time you want to use it. But in this instance with the EcoFlow, we could leave that switch on the water heater on and leave the breaker on okay. and basically shut off the alternating current going to that outlet from your phone or from the, the display screen so you don't, you know, on those cold winter days, you don't have to come outside, open your van door just to turn a breaker on and turn that on. You could do it from the comfort of your bed. Yeah, that's so nice. And then I can just keep it off while I'm not using it to save my battery life. 
Sure, yeah, absolutely. We give out free consultations on the install and the troubleshooting. We also have a dedicated channels with videos to help you set it up and troubleshoot any issues that you could potentially have. You can either come to our shop and we will help you out with the install and you can purchase the package and the power kit directly from us at the shop or we will send it to you and we will do an online consultation. The MSRP price on the EcoFlow website and all their certified distributors is exactly the same. We are currently working on our DIY website, but until this is up and running, you can contact me directly and talk to me for a consultation or to place an order. The contact will be in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the installation, you can reach out to these guys at Drifter Van's website. We're actually gonna be making another video about the performance of this power kit once I move into the van and once it's completed. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in more van videos and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>